American shad were introduced to the West in 1871, when fish were first released in major rivers up and down the Pacific coast. Plankton eaters, the American shad is the largest of the herring species and averages three to five pounds. They are silver on the sides and green to blue on top, with green shading on their fins. Like other anadromous fish species, they spend most of their lives at sea and return to freshwater to spawn. Females release free-floating eggs that will be fertilized by later arriving males called buck shad in a spawning frenzy. Eggs hatch in eight days and fry spend four to five years in salt water before returning to spawn. Shad often survive to spawn twice or more. Today, millions of shad return to the Sacramento, the Umpqua, the Sayusla, the Columbia, the Willamette, and other rivers. The best time to fish for shad is when they return to spawn from May until mid-July. It's easier to catch the shad swimming upstream by facing a strong current. These fish will bite just about any small lure or fly. Small bright colored jigs with or without bucktail or plastic grub tails are preferred by many anglers. You can see that, but this has been the hot color. Keeping the moss off is the key. But just like a 30 second ounce jig head. And that color pink seems to be the color with some sparkles in it. One or two split shots, depending on which spot you're fishing. Pretty simple. Two popular places to fish for shad are the Umpqua River between Elkton and Roseburg and the lower Willamette River, especially around Clackamat Park. Shad fishing is fairly basic in setup. An ultralight to medium trout rod and reel, or even a fly rod is perfect for shallower rivers like the Umpqua. For larger rivers where you may be fishing deeper, very light action rods like kokanee rods are perfect for catching these soft mouthed fish. On the Willamette River, a popular setup is a three-way swivel to your main line with a two to three foot dropper to a weight and then another three to four foot leader to either a dick knight spoon or a grub on a small jig head. On the Umpqua River, some split shot three to four feet above your jig head and a grub will generally do the trick. The most important aspect of shad fishing is finding the lines they travel in. This is where we're at. The typical fishing depth is, you know, 12 to 15 feet is pretty good, um, not deep and this area is really a, a pretty good spot. The fish will move around and they tend to run in a line, so um, if you're not catching fish, you really should move. Um, and the thing to do really is to kind of, if you see people catching fish, you'll often see them catching fish in like a line with each other. And so it is often better to actually get upstream or downstream of a boat that's catching fish than it is to kind of get right next to them because these fish seem to run in a bit of a line. They tend to follow a narrow pathway up a river, so getting your gear down in front of those lines is important. While shad are fun to catch and release, we encourage anglers to keep these fish. They are very bony, but some people like to smoke and can shad, which dissolves many of the small bones. I like to smoke shad and then pick the meat off the bones to either can or use in dishes that feature oily fish. Others vacuum pack small shad to use as bait for crabs or salmon. Shad roe, or eggs, are considered a delicacy and are popular dusted in flour and then fried lightly. Good luck out there, anglers. There he is, first one of the day.